morning my dear children so today we are going to do the explanation of the ninth chapter of beehive that is the bond of love which is written by Kenneth Anderson this is a beautiful story uh, it describes the emotional bond between the human beings and animals so it's a very beautiful story let's begin with the chapter introduction of the chapter this is the story of love and friendship between an animal and a human being and a very good example of the love and friendship between an uh, animal and a human being is the story of androcles and the lion if you all have if you all remember it or if you have read it if you, have, you haven't read please uh, read it because i cannot tell you the whole story here the story is developed around the concept that love is a reciprocal even animals respond sincerely to the affection and care shown to them by human beings see we have read about uh, we have seen or we have read about the bond between the human beings and the pet animals but we haven't read about the bond between the human being and the wild animal uh, but in this particular chapter you will just read about it in fact the emotional bond that animals form is so strong that they do not easily forget those who care for and love them. One day, the author found a bear cub in a field. He took it home and presented it to his wife. The bear and the author's wife developed a great love for each other. When the bear grew up, it was sent to the zoo at Mysore. She became very sad. After three months, she visited the zoo. The bear, whose name was Baba, at once recognized her and danced with happiness. She came. But she could not live without the bear. So she got the permission of the zoo superintendent to get the bear back. A special place was made at home for the grown-up bear. Now both the bear and the writer's wife were happy. The story shows that animals too have as much love and affection as human beings have. So in this particular video today, uh, we are going to just cover half of the chapter. Next half of the chapter, we'll do in the next class. So the bond of love. Let's just start with the begin with the chapter. Before you read, can there be love and friendship between human beings and wild animals? So a big example I gave you of a uh, androcles and the lion and the and recently I've seen a video where. Um, the bond between the tiger and I think lion or tiger has been shown with a man who uh, when the tiger I exactly don't remember the whether it was tiger or lion when it was a cub he uh, kept it for some while at his place and later on when it start uh, when it grew up he just left that uh, lion in the jungle so after so many years when he again went into the jungle and uh, uh, when he called his name the lion came running and hugged him so I don't know how much true it is but I have seen that so yes we can see the friendship between human beings and wild animals but it is very very rare let's read a fascinating account of an orphaned sloth bear uh, bear that was rescued by the author so here is the characteristics of sloth bear Sloth bears inhabit forested areas including the tropical rainforest of India and grasslands at lower elevations. Sloth bears have very shaggy hair and long muses. Long muses with very projected face they have as you can see in the picture. Using their claws to dig, they can use their lips to form a tube which can go deep into the ground or into hard to reach areas like dead trees for their food. Their main food is termites, termites in Hindi, Dimak. You can hear them suck up their food from several feet away. So first paragraph, I will begin with Bruno, my wife's pet sloth bear. So narrator or you can say author is narrating the story. I got him for her by accident. Two years ago, we were passing through the sugarcane field near Mysore. People were driving away the wild pigs from the fields by shooting at them. Some were shot and some escaped. We thought that everything was over when suddenly a black sloth bear came out panting in the hot sun. Panting means 
breathing very heavily. So the narrator's wife got a pet sloth bear as a pet. It was just because of an accident. Two years before the time when this story was written, the narrator and his friends were passing through sugarcane fields near Mysore. So farmers were driving out pigs from their fields by shooting at them. As it was apparently over, suddenly a sloth bear appeared from the fields. It was breathing very heavily due to running and the excessive of heat. So now, now the second para. Now I will not shoot a sloth bear one tonally, but unfortunately for the poor beast, one of my companions did not feel that way about it and promptly shot the bear on the spot. So narrator, narrator when he saw uh, almost all the pigs were out and some of them ran away somewhere shot dead. Now will not shoot a sloth bear. So he suddenly saw a sloth bear coming out of the field. For the no reason he decided that he decided that he will not sh uh, shoot the sloth bear because it, there was no point in shooting the sloth bear. The sloth bear was not destroying the fields or not doing anything. So he just thought that for no good reason he is going to kill that sloth bear. But same was not the thought of his companion. As soon as he saw the sloth bear, he shot the sloth bear and, and promptly his companion, narrator's companion, he shot the sloth bear on the spot. As we watched the fallen animal, we were surprised to see that the black fur on its back moved and left the prostate body. Then we saw it was a baby bear that had been riding on its mother back when the sudden shot had killed her. The little creature ran around its prostate parent making a pitiful noise. So prostrate it is given lying on the ground facing downwards. So as the bear was shot by the narrator's companion, the animal it lay on the ground but a part of its furry black body moved. So they watched that the furry body was moving. So it was really surprising. It, but when they noticed, they saw that it was a baby bear that had been lying on the mother's back. Now that the mother bear was dead, the baby got up and ran around the mother's body and he was crying in a pitiful noise. I ran up to it sorry I ran up to it to attempt a capture it scooted into the sugar cane field following it with my companions I was at last able to grab it by the scruff of its neck while it snapped and tried to scratch me with its long hooked claws so scooted means here ran away the scruff of the neck means take hold of from the back of the neck or collar so the narrator, he when he uh, tried to capture the uh, baby bear, the bear escaped into the sugarcane field. The group chased the narrator and his friends. They chased. They wanted to get that baby bear because they were very much sure that if their baby bear was left alone, someone might kill him. The narrator caught hold of it from the back of its neck. The bear tried to scratch them with its hook shaped jaws because he just wanted to run away from there. We put it we put it in one of the gunny bags <coughs> we had brought and when I got back to Bangalore, now the name of the Bangalore is Bangaluru, I duly presented it to my wife. She was delighted. She at once put a colored ribbon around its neck. And after discovering the cub was a boy, she christened it Bruno. So the narrators and his friends, they just grabbed the baby bear and they put it in one of the gunny bags. Gunny bags is a sack which they have bought. And then he took, Bru uh, sorry, he took the baby bear back to Bangalore and he just presented that bear to his wife. And his wife was very, very delighted to see the baby bear that means she was an animal lover right 
she at once put a colored ribbon just to show that it is a pet animal she just put a colored rib uh, ribbon around his neck and just after discovering after finding out that the baby bear is a male she named christine means named the bear bruno it gave she gave the name bruno Bruno soon took to drinking milk from a bottle. It was but a step further and within a few days he started eating and drinking everything else. And everything is the right word for he ate porridge made from any ingredients, vegetables, fruits, nuts, meat, especially pork, pork is pig's meat, curry and rice regardless of condiments. Condiments means it was full of spices still though because many times we heard that uh, we hear that sorry that animals uh, they don't like spices they the spices are not given to them and chilies bread eggs chocolate sweets pudding ice cream etc 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 as for drink milk tea coffee lime juice irritated water buttermilk beer sorry beer alcoholic liquor and in fact anything liquid it all went down with relish so Bruno he started drinking first he, since he was small so he started drinking milk from a bottle but it was just a step further and within very few days he started eating everything everything means everything and everything is the right word why is it the right word because whatever he gets he used to eat whether it is a porridge made from any ingredients, the vegetables, fruits, nuts, meat, curry, rice. We hardly see this kind of thing, right? Because we have a pet and we, um, we see the pet animals, they eat a certain kind of it. The yeah, other animals, they eat a certain kind of it. But here he was eating everything, whatever it was available to him just imagine regardless of the spices which was uh, there in the food he used to eat all kind of foods the chilies bread egg chocolate sweets pudding ice cream everything and if we talk about the drinks he used to have milk tea coffee lime juice aerated water buttermilk beer alcohol and he used to relish he really used to love those things enjoy those meals the bear came, became very attached to our two Alsatian dogs. So, apart from the bear, they already had two Alsatian dogs, which shows that they were animal lover. And to all the children of the tenants living in our bungalow, he was left quite free in his younger days and spent his time in playing, running into the kitchen, and going to sleep in our bed. So he was very, not only with the narrator's wife, he was attached to the um, two Alsatian dogs which were already there in narrator's house. And he was, he really became attached to the tenants uh, living in our bung, uh, bungalow. Tenants means the people who used to live on rent. Now he was left quite free. So since he was very small, so he was left free in the house. He could go anywhere. He could go into the kitchen, he could climb the bed, he could sleep in the bed also. One day an accident befell him. I put down poison to kill the rats and mice that had got into my library. Bruno entered the library as he often did and he ate some of the poison. Paralysis set into the extent that he could not stand on his feet. But he dragged himself on his stumps to my wife. Who called me I guessed what had happened off I rushed in the car to the vet's residence a case of poisoning tame beer barium carbonate what to do so one day an uh, accident befell upon Bruno what he did he usually used to go into narrator's library so he went there and as he was in the habit of eating anything he just found a tablet of barium carbonate which was kept to kill the mice and rat in the library but since Bruno was habit of eating anything, he ate that barium carbonate and the after effect of it was that he got paralyzed and he was, he to such an extent he was paralyzed that he could not stand on his feet. Anyhow, he managed to reach to narrator's wife 
and the narrator's wife followed him and narrator anyhow he could guess that what has happened and he rushed to the veterinary doctor and for the veterinary doctor also it was the different kind and first kind of case first of all a tame bear secondly it has eaten a barium carbonate a poison now what has to be done out came his medical books and since it was a different and a new kind of case so he took out his medical book and he just went through the index to find out what poison did you say sir barium carbonate ah yes baba barium salts ah barium carbonate symptoms paralysis treatment injections of just a minute sir i will bring my syringe and the medicine so he just uh, started finding out what has to be done in such cases and soon he got that uh, what treatment has to be given so he just find out that if, a, uh, if anybody takes barium carbonate what has to be done so the first of all he found out that the symptom was paralysis, paralysis which already bruno was facing and the treatment was an injection he said just to wait a minute sir i am going to get an injection or syringe a dash back to the car bruno still floundering about on his stumps but clearly weakening rapidly same some vomiting heavy breathing with heavy flanks and gaping mouth so he took out a syringe and the and he gave the medicine bruno was struggling to move he was vomiting he was breathing very heavily and his mouth was big wide open hold him everybody in goes the hypothalamic bruno squeals 10 cc of the antidote enters his system without a drop being wasted 10 minutes later condition unchanged another 10 cc injected 10 minutes later breathing less stri- stertorous bruno can move his arms and legs a little although he cannot stand yet 30 minutes later bruno gets up and has a great feed he look at us with disdainfully as much as to say what's barium carbonate to a big black bear like me bruno is still eating so here hypodermic means a long needle used to give an injection under the skin and stertorous breathing means noisy breathing as somebody is snoring so the doc- doctor asked everyone to hold bruno because it was a big animal as it is creamed the mes- medicine was injected in uh, bruno's skin as the condition did not change they watched him for few minutes and for 10 minutes say and then they noticed that there was no uh, improvement in his condition so another 10 cc was given to him after 10 minutes 10 minutes later bruno's breathing after giving the second dose his 10 minutes later his breathing was less strained but now he was breathing normally Bruno can now he can move his arms and legs and little although he cannot but still he was not able to stand on his feet 30 minutes later after 30 minutes Bruno he got up and has a great feet he had a good amount of food he looked at us as disdainfully disapprovingly he was looking at them and as if he wanted to ask question to them ki what a barium carbonate a small tablet can do do anything to such a huge animal hai na and bruno is still he was busy in eating as if he was just behaving as nothing has happened and those small things cannot affect him another time he found nearly 1 gallon of old ginger oil which i had drained from the sump of a stewed pig and was keeping as a weapon against the inroads of termites he promptly drank the lot but it had no ill effects whatever so in another accident bruno drank the used ginger oil which the narrator had taken out of the stewed baker car stewed baker is an american car and he has uh, kept that engine oil to kill the termites because the termites in roads of termites means they were increasing vast number just to stop them he had kept that but that uh, having that engine oil did affect bruno nothing happened to 
him. Now with this we come to the end of the half of the chapter. Next half of the chapter will cover in next class. Till then please go through the chapter. If, uh, if you find any difficulty please do ask. Now right from right now start studying because your annuals will be held in the school itself that is offline. So start preparing now. Till then have a great day. Bye.